Today we'll take a look at the 50 best JRPGs that can be beaten in less than 20 hours. No only in Japan games, even if they're fan translated, and no indie RPGs. Also please note that this list is in random order. And with that said, let's begin. Number 50. Suikoden Yeah, the first Suikoden ever can be completed in about 12 hours or so. Hell, even if you recruit every Star of Destiny, you still won't make it past 20 hours. I think the reason why this game is so short is because Konami was just testing the waters with it, an idea that turned out to be great, but was kinda dangerous at the time. A game with three different battle mechanics and over 100 characters to recruit, maybe it wouldn't appeal to a lot of people. Thankfully it did, and the best JRPG series ever made was born. Number 49, Oninaki. Oninaki is an action RPG with a dark story about spiritualism and reincarnation. It's a bit underappreciated, but I thought it had solid combat and awesome narrative. Even if you only control one character and he's someone attached to his weapon the entire game, you can complete this gem in less than 20 hours on either easy or normal mode. It's challenging, but it's not too grindy, so I felt satisfied with my 18 hours or so the first time I beat it. Number 48, Summon Knight, Swordcraft Story. Here you control a male or female protagonist that make a pact with a creature, all in order to help them train to win the city tournament. I think since the idea is pretty basic, although very charming, the game didn't have any reasons to be long. In fact, you can beat it in 12 hours or less depending on how much you grind. You won't have to do that much though since the encounter rate is high here. Controls during battle take some time getting used to, but once you do, it can get pretty fun. Number 47 is the Odin Felgana. I won't be covering JRPGs from the 16-bit era and below because most of them were below the 20-hour mark, however, I will include remakes of them, like this one. It's a full remake of the original East 3, now fully in 3D with fast-paced combat. Everything has been completely redone, including the bosses and some extra story. One of the many adventures of Adult Christine and his friend Doggy, though you only play as Adult here, of course. This is an excellent game, quite challenging but very worth playing, beatable in about 8 hours or so. It's also available on Steam. A remaster of it was done last year, but only in Japan. Number 46, Knights of Azure. This game stretches a bit, especially after the credits since it's one of the many modern JRPGs with a true ending. To get it, you'll spend a few more hours than normal. It's quite challenging, another game with no difficulty settings. Arnis is a half-demon that works as an agent of an organization dedicated to fight demons, so you don't have party members other than the same demons that you summon, controlled by the AI. This is a really good game, and even with the true ending shenanigan, you can complete it in just a bit less than 20 hours. It's also on Steam, by the way. Number 45, Lord of Magna, Made in Heaven. You play as a guy that inherits an inn. Problem is, he finds these mysterious girls with magic abilities that need some serious help, so he invites them to stay, but also fights with them. Of course, he can barely do anything, but the girls make up for him. However, everyone can attack nearby enemies to have them bump into the ones in the back to instantly kill them. They damage the bosses too, fortunately, but for those, you'll be fighting them directly. Kill all bosses in one map and enemies will stop spawning. This little strategy RPG can be beaten in about 17 hours and it doesn't get challenging until near the end. Number 44, Code of Princess. One of the shortest RPGs in this list is Code of Princess. Both the 3DS original and its Switch remaster can be beaten in about 5 hours. 
You play in a sexy comedy with Princess Solange in a quest to save her kingdom from war, but you don't have to play as her. Every character that joins you is recruitable and playable, and there are a lot of them. Combat is a bit technical, especially since you have to move up or down between layers to be able to attack your enemies, but it's a really fun game with colorful graphics, great music, and simple gameplay mechanics. Number 43, Rhapsody, a musical adventure. Originally released on PS1, then on the DS, this remaster though is based on the PS1 version. It follows Cornette in a quest to rescue the prince kidnapped by the evil witch Marjorie. She's the only human character you'll control here as the rest of the party are dolls she summons. They all come with different skills and magics, way more can be recruited along the way. Combat is played on grids, but this is not a tactical RPG. Encounters are random and battle screens are really short, so yeah, there you go. It's a good game, don't be fooled by its cheesy plot. 8 to 10 hours are enough to complete it. Number 42, Muramasa the Demon Blade. A very short adventure with two main characters to choose from, but even if you beat the game with both, which is recommended because they have different stories and bosses, you'll still beat in about 10 to 12 hours max. Of course, the difficulty you play in will either increase or decrease that a little. You have a variety of swords you can equip, switch to in battle, upgrade and forge. Beautiful 2D action RPG by Vanillaware. It was originally released on the Wii. This Vita version is a fantastic remaster though. Number 41, Parasite Eve. This horror RPG masterpiece is easily completed in 10 hours or hell, even less. It makes sense because story-wise, it's basically a survival horror, playing as a detective with powers trying to stop the monster Eve in New York. It actually plays as a horror game, except you fight in random encounters with an attack waiting bar, using magic as well as leveling up. It's a bit dated, but since it's a must play, it needed to be here. I believe its sequel can be beaten in about 13 hours or so too, but I couldn't get into it, so I wouldn't know. Number 40, Fuga, Melodies of Steel. Enveloped in a devastating war, a group of kids join up together to find their missing families. Controlling a tank with three cannons, they battle enemies with strengths and weaknesses. A pair of kids controls one, each with a different type of weapon. Inside the tank, there's talking, bonding, upgrading, etc. Lots to do here. It's an extremely creative and unique JRPG with great pacing, story and music. Surprisingly though, it can be completed in about 13 hours or so. No difficulty settings are there or side quests of any kind, so no matter what you do, your playthrough won't net you over 20 hours. The game's available on all modern systems, by the way, but only digital. Number 39, Full Metal Alchemist 1 and 2. I put them together since one is a direct sequel to the other and they play almost exactly the same, though the sequel is better since it fixed some control and camera issues the first one had. It's basically the popular anime told into three parts on the PS2, but we only got the first two volumes. You play as Edward Elric, who can equip different weapons with the powers of alchemy. The same alchemy can be used in a variety of ways to battle enemies or help yourself against them. His brother Al is usually controlled by the AI as your only party member here. Each game can be beaten in about 12 hours, so they're pretty short. Usually it's only a bunch of scenes, dialogue and a mission, often with a boss. They're linear games, so you can 100% them easily in less than 20 hours if you want to. Number 38, Lunar Nights. This is part of the Boktai universe with three games seen in the Game Boy Advance. We only got the first two. I'm not a big fan of those, but they're also pretty damn short. Lunar Nights is standalone and you don't need to play the others to understand it. You play as two characters in a sci-fi, kinda cyberpunk universe with a dark sense of humor. I really like the story here. So these characters fight and complete missions in an isometric view, you'll play one chapter with one and then with the other and so on. 
They control very differently, so it might take you a while to adapt to the constant episodic changes here, but I'm sure you'll succeed. This hidden gem can be finished in 12 hours if you stick to the main story. Number 37, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. The RPG mode in this game is a 2D action RPG where you control one character. You can take up with you only one ally who will be controlled by the computer. You got your set of skills and controls very similar to a fighting game, but in a beat em up style of gameplay. Missions require you to beat several enemies per area until you finally arrive at the boss. And of course, boss fights are intense and epic here. As for the plot, it's one of the many adventures of Gran, the captain of the Grand Cypher, and his crew, but everybody seems to have lost their memory, so it's up to Gran and Lyria to refresh their brains and recruit them back to finally face the one pulling the strings. Awesome game here, it's only about 10 hours long, very worth your time. Number 36, Lost Kingdoms. This GameCube oddity follows Princess Katia in a quest to save her kingdom from a plague. She will explore different areas in the form of stages and fight with the power of the cards. Up to four of them can be used in battle, some of them in the form of summoned allies, others acting as Katia's weapons. All with a cooldown, of course. Despite having a wide variety of places to visit that are fairly long to traverse, the game's very short. Probably because there's barely any story focus here. As a result, chances are you'll beat this game in only 10 hours or most likely less. It's very good though and quite challenging towards the end. Number 35, Grow Lancer 2, The Sense of Justice. Wayne Cruz is a newly appointed knight and must perform his duties in the middle of a war. As always with this series, the writing is excellent and the development varies depending on your choices. And also, just like with the others, it's a hardcore real-time strategy RPG with multiple routes and endings. You select the actions of your characters including Wayne or the direction you want them to move to and they'll execute your orders out of your control. Plenty of mission objectives here, always something new to deal with. While the rest of the localized games are at least 30 hours long, this one doesn't make it past 20, but the replay value here is high, a couple of playthroughs isn't a bad idea. Number 34, Atelier Shally. You know, most Atelier games are quest driven, but even if you stick to the main story, you'll see at least 20 hours of gameplay. Shelly, however, was developed with a different idea. There's two protagonists to choose from, but their stories are intertwined, which means the plot won't change that much regardless of who you choose. So stick to one character and the main story can be completed in less than 15 hours. One factor that influences this is that the time limit is gone, so there you go, no more stressing over any quest whatsoever. This is one of the best Atelier games in my opinion, with one of the best battle systems in the series. Number 33, Ragnarok Tactics. Another strategy RPG that's quite short despite its nature. I say this because your silent male or female protagonist makes decisions throughout the game. Some decisions affect which main character's route you'll follow. So sticking with only one means you'll beat the game with a good ending in less than 20 hours. There's a war going on and there's different characters to recruit, some of them in side quests, but even doing them in one route won't surpass the 20 hour mark. Gameplay's traditional tactics, easy to get into, with great pacing and a job system for different characters. One of the best JRPGs on the PSP. Number 32 is Origin. Like other JRPGs we've seen in this video, this is another one with multiple protagonists. Initially there's two, but if you beat the game with both, you unlock the third. However, they all traverse the same tower with the same floors and or stages and mostly the same bosses. So yeah, beating the game with one is just fine. If you do that, you'll be done in about 10 hours or so, depending on the difficulty you play of course. It's a fast-paced action RPG, no party members, but with excellent controls and combat. 
badass music accompanies the entire playthrough as always with this series. It's also available almost anywhere nowadays. Number 31, Astral Chain. This action RPG by Platinum Games is a futuristic sci-fi setting where you play as a police officer, male or female, but the one you don't choose will do all the talking. Actual police investigations will be a part of the gameplay with you asking questions around or finding clues, nothing convoluted. The complexity comes from the action as you control your MC and their legion, the summoned creature you use to attack or remove obstacles, but your MC can attack too. It's a very challenging game, but the combat is solid and responsive, with great visuals and epic boss fights. If you play on normal though, you might get close to the 20 hour mark, but if you stick to the main story, I doubt you'll go over it. Number 30, Ark the Lab. Unlike all of its sequels, this is a very short JRPG. You can beat it in 10 to 12 hours and that's time very well spent. It's the start of a series, but each entry got a different protagonist, even though the first three are all connected. We only got this game with its two sequels plus a little spin-off on the PS1. They can still be bought separately on the PS3 or PS Vita store though. Ark's searching for his father, Kururu wants to fight the darkness, their goals align thanks to a pact with the Guardians and the story begins. It's a great strategy RPG for beginners, not too hard but not too easy either. Awesome music, basic gameplay, some small grinding here and there, etc. It's a pretty solid game despite its short length. Number 29, Folklore. Two protagonists meet up in the mysterious village of Dulin, Ellen to look for her mother and kids to investigate the underworld. Turns out they acquire powers to absorb the souls of the folk, the creatures they fight, to use as weapons in battle. While each character has a separate story, their goals align and cooperate together, but you need to reach the final chapter of both separately to unlock their final boss. Regardless, you can be done in about 16 hours or so. It's such a dark and unique game that's definitely worth a try. Number 28, I am Setsuna. This turn-based RPG is a bit of a stretch since it can get pretty close to the 20-hour mark. It all depends on how you play it, of course, but sticking to the main story, grinding involved, it shouldn't take you more than that. Follow silent protagonist Endear to help Setsuna in a pilgrimage to sacrifice herself in order to protect her tribe. It's a sad but charming game with beautiful music all played in piano. Traditional gameplay with towns, overworld, areas, ruins and thankfully visible enemies around. And of course a turn-based combat. It's a great game, there's also Lost Sphere by the same developer, but it's a bit longer than this one. Great game too though. Number 27, Vanguard Bandits. A grid-based strategy RPG with you controlling giant knights in a story with multiple routes and endings. Stick to one route and ending so you can beat it in 15 hours or so? There's no true ending here, so you don't have to complete the others if you don't want to. Bastion will shape the outcome of the war, with these decisions fighting together with different allies depending on the route. This is a very rare and expensive JRPG nowadays, localized by working designs. No problem, as it can still be found on the PS3 or PS Vita store, at least digitally. Number 26, Knights of Azure 2. This is a sequel, but with different protagonists, plot and characters. It's connected to the first one, but it isn't necessary to play it first. And it's actually shorter. Playing this game on easy or normal won't surpass the 15 hour mark. My file says 12 hours. There's a time limit because of the night cycle, but it's barely anything to worry about. So she's Alush, recently turned into a half demon to stop the moon queen with the help of her friends. Unlike its prequel, you do have a human character as party member here, but you also have two other monster minions to fight beside you. Great combat here with intuitive controls, short missions and epic boss fights. Just a warning, like its predecessor, this is a Yuri game. Number 27, 
Number 25, Rhapsody 2. You now play as Cornet's daughter in a similar quest, Kururu trying to find her charming prince. The gameplay is still traditional with towns, areas and dungeons, but the combat is now simple turn-based, no grids anymore. Although some characters like Kururu can summon dolls to execute a skill for one turn. The variety in party members and the quick interface during battle make the random encounters and the small dungeons more appealing. This is definitely a worthy sequel and it can be completed in like 12 hours. Number 24, Battle Princess of Arcadia. A digital exclusive to the PS3, these 2D action RPG inspired by Odin's Fear can be completed in 16 hours more or less. The story is quite different though, a comedy following Princess Plume fighting monsters trying to invade her kingdom. A plethora of allies will join you, but you can only control three during battle, one at a time, being able to switch between them. All action is fought in 2D, but there are three types of stages. The regular ones with just enemies, the war fights against enemy soldiers, and the boss fights. They each have a few different gameplay mechanics to spice things up. Very unique game here, definitely recommend it. Number 23, Land Greaser 1 and 2. Full remix of the first two Land Greaser games ever, both about the hero of light and his involvement in a war. While connected, they're standalone and can be played separately, but since they come together in this release, you'll most likely play them in order. Story will vary a lot because several of your choices matter and open up new routes that lead to many different endings. An option to replay any chapter is there, so you won't have to restart the games. The first one can be beaten in just 10 hours. The second one would stretch a bit to 15 or 16. I got a crap ton of routes and endings on both, and my playthroughs still didn't surpass the 20 hour mark. Number 22, Half Minute Hero. Silly games can sometimes be fun and hooky. With the help of a money loving goddess, your nameless hero must defeat the evil lords. On every stage, you got 30 seconds to kill them, but time can be replenished by paying money to the goddess. It also stops in towns, so it's a time management video game with no real battle mechanics, just your MC bumping in 2D against enemies, including the bosses. This dumb game can be completed in 6 to 8 hours max, and it's got some extra episodes with other characters and different gameplay. There's also a remake of it on the Xbox 360, which is just a short. Number 21, Near, Gestalt or Replicant. It doesn't matter which version you go for, since it's the same story, just with an older or younger protagonist. Its remake is just a short. Sure, playing them on hard and doing side quests will probably surpass the 20 hour mark, but the main story can be completed in 16 to 18 hours, and I think that's a stretch. Not much else to say about this masterpiece, one of the best action RPGs of all time. Number 20, Sakura Wars, so long my love. This game on the Wii and PS2 will take you less than 20 hours to complete no matter what, because there are no side quests and only a limited free amount of time to spend with the girl you want to bond with. Decisions galore make the visual novel segments much more enjoyable, some small puzzles and minigames are included. Finally, combat maps will be long, but shifting in objectives and layouts, making them pretty diverse, especially the boss fights. Excellent game here. The other game on PS4, by the way, is also pretty short, but I did over 20 hours, so I'm not including it here. Number 19, Shan Yuan Sword 7. This is a Chinese RPG, but I'll make an exception for it because I very rarely talk about it. It's a 12 to 13 hour long action RPG which is very good, a journey following a brother trying to restore his sister's body in the middle of an ongoing war. The game's combat and controls are superb here, but it's quite a challenging mofo, so be warned. There are only a handful of side quests and most of them are actually worth doing, obviously that will increase your playthrough a bit. It's an excellent game, definitely check it out if you can.
Number 18, Lost Dimension. Soldiers are trapped in a tower, forced to kill one of their own per chapter if they want to reach the top and escape. A few of them might be traitors, but deciding who to kill is crucial here. A minigame is playable to help you decide, after analyzing their intentions during dialogue, of course. Stages are played in tight areas with only 5 active fighters per battle. You have a limited range to move around and execute an action, but you can also defer your turn to a nearby ally or perform a follow-up attack with others. This is an excellent game with great ideas, dark plot, beatable in 17 hours or less. Number 17, Legend of Mana. Be it the original or its modern remaster, Legend of Mana is a strange case here. It's a quest-driven RPG, but it's also an open-world game, meaning it's kinda hard to focus on the main story alone, since there's different ways of beating it. And without a guide, you'll be kinda lost, trapped in an endless loop of side quests. So you choose your male or female protagonist to launch into a gorgeous fantasy world to revive the mana tree and restore the world. 2D combat with nice controls if you can appreciate it for what it is, Party members can join you and there's even a couch co-op mode. So how long it is? With a guide, I'd say around 17 hours. As a matter of fact, most mana games can be beaten within the same time frame, except the remake of Trials of Mana, which is slightly longer than all of them. Number 16, The Legend of Nayuta. This is a remaster of a PSP original game we never got. You play as Nayuta and Noi, trying to save their worlds from merging. As with many Falcom action RPGs, it's fast, intuitive and with awesome combat and incredible soundtrack. It often looks like it's in 2D, but nope, it's fully in 3D. The game's pacing is incredibly well done, since it starts off easy, even on the highest difficulty, slowly getting more and more challenging. This is a really good game, you can beat in like 13 hours, but there's a small post game that's only like 3 or 4 hours long, and it's very worth playing through. Number 15, Dragon Marked for Death. Developed by Inti Create, this is a 2D action RPG that's quest driven. It shines in couch or online multiplayer though, but lonely story mode can be pretty fun too. Choosing between four class characters, each controlling very differently, off you go to try to make your way to the richest part of town, all so you can have your revenge. Quests have a time limit, but it's almost impossible to run out of time. Although this game can be pretty difficult, you can still complete it in less than 20 hours no problem, especially playing with someone else. Number 14, Death and Request 2. Mai kills her abusive father and is sent to an orphanage where horrible things happen at night. Off she goes with her newly acquired parasite which gives her and two other girls powers to fight the abominations at midnight. It's a horror RPG with an interesting turn-based combat where you create different combination attacks with skills. Some of them can launch the enemies across the battlefield to bump against the walls or onto each other for more damage. It is highly recommended to play its prequel first, even though that's a much longer game. This second entry will take you about 18 hours to complete on normal mode. Number 13 is 6 The Ark of Napishtim. Also available on PSP and Steam, it's one of the hardest Ease games ever made. So while the story and journey are quite short, the game still might take you between 10 and 15 hours, half of that will probably be grinding. Neither version has difficulty settings, though there's a cheat mode to make everything a walk in the park. I doubt you'll be interested in that since it makes the playthrough kinda pointless, but it's there if you care. Whatever the case, it's very worth playing. Number 12, Super Mario RPG. A full remake of the original Super Nintendo release, it's basically the same game about Mario and friends and Bowser, yep, trying to recover the missing stars to save the world. 
Lovely story, charming humor, great pacing, addictive gameplay, it's the masterpiece we all know and love. Surprisingly, the remix is easier than the original version, and as a result, it can be beaten in only 12 hours or so. Number 11. Dragonstar Varnir This compiled hard JRPG is a bit dark as it follows a witch hunter that ends up becoming a witch himself, so now he switches sides to fight for the witches and help them against the other hunters. The battle system is interesting, it plays in turns but you only control three characters that can move between three layers. Some enemies are positioned lower and others higher, but the big guys are more vulnerable in a different layer. This makes battles more strategic and engaging. And of course, you'll go through some super sexy animations when the witches power up. Main story alone goes for 18 hours or so, making it one of the shortest JRPGs developed by this company. Number 10. Dragon's Crown a 2D action RPG from Vanillaware, very quest driven, you can actually focus on every single quest and still beat it in less than 20 hours. Focusing on the main story and final boss alone once will take you just 10 hours. After selecting the type of character you want, off you'll go into a fantastic beat em up with 3 more characters of the same class or others if you want to. Obviously controlled by the AI, or actually by other players in real life. Online multiplayer too. I think this is one of the best JRPGs in history with couch co-op mode. Number 9. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon A full remake of the very first Fire Emblem ever made, this one has expanded story, reworked difficulty, but still it's a pretty challenging game. Regardless, it won't take you more than 20 hours to beat. My file says 17 hours and 23 minutes, and yes, I know I'm a bit of a veteran, but I insist it's gotta be a stretch to go beyond those 20 hours. But hey, players can have different styles, right? Which is the reason why I'm not including Brigandine Legend of Runertia. It can be beaten in less than 20 hours too, but... Uh, you know what I mean. No matter the case, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon is an underappreciated game and a must play. The sequel was also remade on the DS and it's just a short, but sadly it stayed in Japan. Fan translations exist though. Number 8. Fuga Melodies of Steel 2 in this sequel, you continue the story with the kids now trying to rescue some of their kidnapped friends. Gameplay is identical to its predecessor, slightly more challenging and with a few small new features here and there. So back is the same awesome combat with a pair of kids per cannon, heroic modes to do more damage, combination attacks linked to character bonds, etc. It's just as great as before. It is highly recommended to play the first game first, so you can delve into this awesome sequel. It's a bit longer now though, over 16 hours long, but no more than 20. Number 7. White Knight Chronicles this is an action RPG with a customizable main character, but the protagonist is actually Leonard in a quest to save the princess from the evil Magi. He'll do so with your help and other characters, but especially with the help of the White Knight, this giant armored creature that you can play as during battle. Combat revolves around the set of moves you equip every character with as they act on their own, but clicking on a skill orders them to execute it. Kinda like in Final Fantasy XII. Main story alone can be beaten in 18 hours or so, but it also depends on your playstyle as always. There's a direct sequel that I haven't beaten, but it's much longer than this. Number 6. Vandal Hearts most strategy RPGs are usually kinda long, especially because of all the grinding, but this one, I know it's hard to believe, can be completed in 15 hours or so. A group of rogue mercenaries trying to uncover the corruption within the Empire. Sounds like a plot that leaves a lot of room for development, right? Well, Konami managed to narrow it down shortly and concise with excellent narrative. The different objectives on most missions also reduces the repetitive nature of a game like this. A strongly recommended tactical RPG. Number 7. 
Number 5. Rhapsody 3! The beautiful conclusion to the trilogy, you'll play through various chapters in a post game. Every chapter has a different protagonist and acts as a backstory for some characters seen in the previous games, but then the main chapter focuses on the real heroine of this third entry, a charming but also heartbreaking story. Combat here is vastly different from its predecessors, it's still turn-based, but with tons of characters in battle. You only control the commanders though, characters or creatures behind them act on their own. This results in a twisted challenge with balancing issues, but surprisingly still very fun to play. Completing all chapters shouldn't take you more than 15 or 16 hours, even the post game shouldn't surpass 20 hours. Number 4. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink I just reviewed this game and mentioned that the main story can be completed in 15 hours. Another adventure with the captain and the crew now to defeat an evil mad woman and her religious sect. Phenomenal action RPG here with great controls and awesome combat. One thing I didn't mention in the review is that bosses have breakable parts and that weakens them as the fight progresses. This makes the post game basically God Eater, refighting the same bosses over and over again in higher difficulties. I just thought it would be worth mentioning. Number 3 Redemption Reapers. The mercenaries need to redeem their horrible sins from the past by fighting off the evil creatures that want to destroy what's left of humanity. A grid-based combat, pretty standard and easy to get into, awaits you in this dark fantasy RPG. It's challenging and not really recommended for beginners, although there's an easy mode. Just be aware that once you select it, you won't be able to change it again. On normal mode, this game can be beaten in 18 or 19 hours, so yeah, it barely made it to this video. Number 2. Poison Control A very unique action RPG that can be completed even with all of its multiple endings in less than 15 hours. You control two characters, one is the third person shooter part, the other one is the uh, cleaner who cleans the poison in the ground. You know what, there's a heck of a lot to say about this game. That's why I will be fully reviewing it soon, so stay tuned. Hey, that rhymed. Number 1. Is 1 and 2 Chronicles of course these remakes will be here, the best version of this legendary duology, fully in 3D with improved graphics, interface and combat, expanded story and an incredible rearranged soundtrack. These two are the beginning of the adult Christian adventures and how he became a goody two shoes and how he met Doggy etc. They still have the bumping mechanic though, no hack and slash here, but it's good. They're highly recommended. And well, these are some of the shortest RPGs here. First chapter can be completed in 5 hours or 6, well, the second one between 8 or 9. So, not even together they go beyond the 20 hours mark. And so, those were the 50 best short JRPGs that you can beat in less than 20 hours. If you focus on the main story, that is. Or for some, even if you do everything, you still won't make it past the 20-hour mark! Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!